people that God is the one that sustains us. Amen. And as we uh, look back, 2022, God enabled us to get through that, accompanied us, equipped us, helped us, and it is he that will help us in 2023. Matthew chapter 2, uh, for just a few moments, I want to speak about uh, this thought about making good decisions in 2023. And decision making, uh, the decision making process is not always an easy process. And as you think about moving forward, I think uh, it's important for us just to be reminded of a few uh, simple truths. And I think that uh, you, we have really a great picture of what it means to make some good decisions. Really, as we go back to uh, our continued study where we left off, uh, the, the, the life of Jesus, his birth, the nativity. We've uh, been studying the last several weeks about how he came to earth, why he came to earth, all the details involved, all the people that were present. And uh, you'll remember last week, uh, we really focused in on the wise men and why they came to see Jesus. And in chapter 2, uh, we're, we're going to continue reading in just a moment. Uh, today's a time of what people describe as New Year's resolutions, uh, maybe turning over a new leaf, a fresh start. Uh, there are a lot of uh, um, popular New Year's resolutions. Uh, what I thought was interesting, uh, I was reading this week, the number one New Year's resolution most people have is to get more organized. I don't know how many of you would say that is definitely a resolution I need to put on my list. But I have no intention of putting that on my list, right? It's a... <laughs> Getting more organized, maybe. Obviously, to lose weight, that's on the list for a lot of us. Uh, to uh, save more and spend less. Spend more time with family and friends. I mean, those are all good things, and it's good to have goals, and it's good to, uh, 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 you know, set uh, a, a bar, something that you can strive for, you know. As we've said it before, but if you aim at nothing, you're going to hit it every time. So it's, it's important to think about some things. And so I hope that you're doing that, and I hope that that also includes your spiritual life. But let me just remind you today that without God, you and I cannot and will not make good decisions. Your best wisdom, my best uh, understanding, discernment, uh, intelligence, it's just not going to be enough. And if God's not a part in my decision-making process in 2023, I'm going to perhaps stand here next year and look back and say, man, I made a lot of mistakes and really some foolish decisions, and I can attribute that to one really overall uh, uh, point and aspect, and as God wasn't a part of it. And, and, and so if we can get out in front of that and we can just decide, look, I want God to be a part of every decision, every choice that I make, then that'll be a good thing. Uh, you understand, it, I think, as well as I, that you and I are where we are today and we are who we are today as a result of the choices we've made in the past. I can't go back and change some things that I did in 2022, but uh, I am where I am and in the situation that I'm in, in some, to some extent, and uh, the way I responded or didn't respond and reacted and didn't react and steps I didn't take or could have taken or should have taken or did take and I shouldn't have, whatever the case may be, because of choices that we've made. Uh, and not uh, everyone is going to be pleased with the choices that you make this year. And you have to determine in your heart who are you seeking to please. Some of us know the game of trying to please everybody, and, and all that you end up doing is, is most of the time dishonoring God somewhere. If you try to please everyone, you please no one. Your decisions and my decisions, we must also remember, always affect other people. No man is an island unto himself, John Donne wrote. It's paradise lost. None of us uh, are, are, are able to just exempt everybody else. The decisions that you and I make, they're going to affect your, your wife, your husband, your kids, your coworkers, your neighbors, your extended family, whether you want it to or not. And then we're reminded that Without God, we cannot make good choices. You need God. I need God. So let's start the year off right and say, God, here am I. God, take control of my life. Matthew chapter 2, you see decisions had to be made. Wise men came. They worshiped uh, Jesus. In verse 12, being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed in their own country another way. By the way, 
They didn't know all that Herod was going to do and all that Herod uh, 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 was scheming and plotting and all the emotions he was feeling, but God did. You don't know how people are going to respond. You don't know what's going to happen at work this week. You're not sure what your health's going to be like, uh, you know, six months from now, but God knows those things. That's why it's important to be sensitive to the leading of God in your life. So you remember, God tells these wise men, do not go back to Herod. Go home another way, and they do. Verse 13, so when they were departed, the angel, the Lord, appeared to Joseph in a dream. Now, remember, this had happened before. Do you remember that? In Matthew chapter 1, when Joseph hears that his, in, his uh, espoused wife, Mary, is pregnant, and he knows the baby is not his, and, and he's vexed, and he's concerned, and he's a good man, but how's this going to play out? And I don't know if this is good, if this is right. If it's not, I really don't want to do. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. You remember that? And told him, look, it's okay. This is of God, and you got to go with it, and you got to trust me. And in chapter 1, we're told Joseph gets up, and he does what the Lord says. So here's the second time. An angel of the Lord comes, and he appears to Joseph in a dream, and he says, here's what I need you to do. Arise, take the young child and his mother, And flee into Egypt. Egypt. Do you remember when God brought Israel out of Egypt? In the Bible, Egypt always signifies sin, the world. You're telling me to go into Egypt? You need to take Mary and Jesus and go to Egypt. And you stay there until I bring the word. Go until I tell you to do something else. Well, that's good advice. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. If God tells me, do this, I should just keep doing it until he tells me not to do it. Wouldn't you agree? So Joseph, pack your bags and go and, and, and stay there until I give you a word because Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Verse 14, so when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and he departed into Egypt. Good for him. He didn't question it. He didn't argue. But man, we got it so nice here. It's nice. We just got settled. And I don't want to go. I don't know anybody. He doesn't argue. He just does it. You ever argued with God? God, I know you're telling me, but come on. Come on, God. This would really be a better way. Can we we compromise somewhere? And we waste so much time. I mean, why don't we just trust that God knows what's best and God is God? So they go by night. Verse 15, and they were uh, uh, there until the death of Herod, so that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. See, God works on multiple levels, and here's the thing about God. He's always going to keep his word. He never forgets his promises. He's always going to keep his word, and, and whether I'm thinking about all the things God has promised doesn't really matter. God will always fulfill his word, and he had spoken through the prophet Hosea hundreds of years before that, look, my son will come out of Egypt. So he's making this happen. Verse 16, so then when Herod saw that he was mocked of the wise men, he was exceeding wroth, and he was sent forth, and he slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. What a brutal act. Killed all the children two years of age and under. Let's just be safe about this. If you're living in Bethlehem and you have a child that's under the age of two, kill him. Had Jesus stayed, had Joseph had debated and argued, had Joseph just decided, well, let me think about this a little bit more, God. Jesus, perhaps, his humanity would have been killed. Verse 17, why did this gruesome act happen? Again, it was part of prophecy It was fulfilled, which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying in Ramah, there was a voice heard, lamentation, weeping, great mourning, uh, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not. All the signs, a virgin shall conceive, uh, 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 she'll bring forth a son, his name will be called Emmanuel, Uh, he'll be born in Bethlehem, Uh, kings will come out of the east, uh, that uh, we're told that out of Egypt, Uh, the Messiah would come, that uh, there would be great mourning in Bethlehem and that children would be killed. All of these were, again, just further for the student, for the one who was seeking God to see, yes, 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 Jesus is the Messiah. But thanks be to God, Joseph listened. Verse 19, and when Herod was dead, 
Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Hey, a great thought, no matter where you are, you're in New York City, you're in Queens, you're in Manhattan, you go back to your home country to visit, doesn't matter where you are, God can speak to you. God still speaks to us today. So they're in Egypt. Here's the third encounter that, that, that we're told of. And an angel comes and speaks to Joseph. And what does he say? Arise and take the young child and his mother and go back to the land of Israel. For they are dead which sought the young child's life. What time period was this? Not really sure. Honestly, the next time we read about Jesus, he's 12. So we're not quite sure. There's a lot of speculation how long he was in Egypt. But he was there for a little while. Joseph just waited. He did what God said. He waited on the word of the Lord, and now God says, move, go back. So he arises. He takes the young child and his mother, and he comes into the land of Israel. He goes home. But he hears that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod, and all of a sudden he was afraid to go. Herod died, but his son is in, in, in power, and his son is just as brutal as his dad. Whoa, wait a second, God. Are you misleading me? Is this a time now where I, 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 I don't trust you? You want me to go back? Well, wait a minute. Fear creeps in. Has fear ever crept in when, when you came to that point of having to obey the Lord? But notice, he was afraid to go, notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream. There's the fourth time. He turned aside into the parts of Galilee. Don't go back to Bethlehem. I don't want you to go there. You go back to Nazareth where you're from. So they go back to Nazareth. And by the way, in doing so, it fulfilled additional prophecies, which prophets had foretold that the Messiah would be a Nazarene. In the Psalms, uh, in Isaiah. So here is an example of what it means to make good decisions, not only for yourself, but for your family. And what is the common denominator is this one truth. Joseph listened to God. The words of God were those uh, directions that, that made the difference in his life. It wasn't what he thought. It wasn't the, the local news. He didn't have insider tip information. He didn't have assets located in Egypt and in Nazareth and Bethlehem. He, he allowed God's words to be those words that directed him in his life. You and I must let God direct our life. We must allow his word to lead us. As you think about moving into this new year, look, maybe God has been leading your life. Let him continue. Don't get arrogant. Don't think you got it all figured out. You're in a good place. And stop listening to the voice of God. That would be a mistake. For those of us who have some regrets from this past year, look, this is our opportunity to look ahead and say, God, look, I, I can't trust myself. I'm not going to depend upon myself. I'm not God. I'm going to let your words be a priority in my life. It's important that we follow Joseph's example. Four times an angel of God is sent and God speaks to him. God still speaks to you and me today. Anywhere we are, God's word can help us. Whether Joseph was in Bethlehem, Nazareth, Egypt, it didn't matter. Whether you're at work, whether you're at home, whether you're in a volatile relationship situation, whether you are alone and you feel lonely, whether you're in good health or bad, it doesn't matter. The words of God are just the answer that you need in your life. I am 100% convinced that if we just read our Bible like we should, and this was a priority in our life, it would solve 99% of our problems. We waste a lot of time and energy and effort and anxiety and worry because we're trying to figure out things for which God already has an answer. His words need to be our priority. God's uh, word has answers for every aspect of life. His word doesn't just help you in any position in life, but whatever you're facing, it will help you. Whether it's uncertainty, I mean, think about Joseph. Man, I don't know what, to, is this for real? I gotta marry a woman who's pregnant by God? Is this what's gonna happen? I don't know what's gonna happen. This is kind of crazy. What are people gonna think? God's word was able to help guide and direct Joseph through that ordeal. Well, you, you, I need to get up and move. Herod's gonna try to kill Jesus. God's word can provide direction and guidance when we need it. Even when he 
wasn't privy or didn't know that Herod was plotting this, even in his ignorance, God's word was leading and directing him. There's so much you and I are ignorant about. We have no idea what people are feeling, what people are going through. We have no idea what tomorrow holds. And that's why we're just, hold, we're just told to trust and to follow the one who, do, who does know and who holds tomorrow. Because he knows. The words of God will help us in every emotional state we find ourselves. Anxiety, worry, fear, doubt, uncertainty. The words of God have answers for us. And the word of God will never change. Two verses, Matthew 24 and verse 35. What does the Bible say? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Do you understand? You will be dead and gone before God's word ever changes. Your job will be no more. All your relationships will be over. Every, month, every dollar that you would have will be spent before God's word will ever change. Kingdoms will have risen and kingdoms will have fallen and they have no bearing upon the stability of the word of God. God's word is the only thing you and I can hold on to. It never changes because God doesn't change. Psalm 119 verse 89, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. You understand God's not constantly revising his word? Well, maybe I should change that for 2023. You know, that I will never leave them nor forsake them. You know, that's getting to really be a lot. There's a lot of people on the planet. I don't know if I can be with all of them, so let me revise it. It's never God's thought. His word has been established in heaven. It will never change. It needs to be a priority in your life and in mine. Will you make the words of God a priority? How do I do that? Let me just give you a couple quick thoughts. One, listen to the words of God. Put yourself in a position where you're hearing what God is trying to say. Are you listening to the words of God? People often say, I wish God would just show me. I just wish God would just make it clear for me. Are you putting yourself in a position to hear what God is saying? God's primary means of communication is this right here. This. I'm waiting for a dream. You, you're going to wait a long, long time. And here's what God says. Why would I foolishly entertain you with this kind of stuff when I have given you something that has been settled for all eternity? And you won't even bother to pick it up. It's here. All you got to do is, is open it and listen to what he's saying. I don't understand what he's saying. That's okay. He knows what he's saying, and he's got the ability to communicate that to you and to me. And my issue is always not that I can't get something out of it. Usually it's, it's wow, I, I, I know what God's trying to tell me. It's now, am I going to do it or am I not going to do it? I promise if you read it enough and expose yourself to it enough, something's going to stick to you. Because God loves you too much, he died for you, and he is invested in your life and in mine, and he knows that you and I cannot make it by ourselves. and so if we'll just listen to him, we'll make good choices. Joseph, you're going to listen to me? If you listen to me, you save your family. If you listen to me, I fulfill my word. If you listen to me, everything will make sense. We have to learn to listen to God. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Many of you know this verse. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Get saturated with the Bible. Some of us can quote stats and statistics when it comes to politics. Some of us when it comes to entertainment, media. Man, we, we know people and their backgrounds and who they're with this week and what movies they've done and all this kind of stuff. When it comes to the sports world, oh my goodness, we know who's playing what position and who's in what bowl game and all this kind of stuff. But are we saturated with the truths of the word of God? You shall meditate on it day and night. You thinking about the Bible? Is it your go-to move to always say, what would God want me to do? What does he say about this? So that you can observe to do all, not just some, but do all that is written therein. I want to do all, my family, my marriage, my, my work, my, my, my private time by myself, my friendships, my parenting. I want all of it to be really dictated and saturated in God's instruction in my life. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Then thou shalt have good success. Is the Bible that priority? Am I listening? 
That's why we say read the Bible. Set yourself some goals. Start today. Listen to God. How do I make it a priority? Not only listen to God's words, but then trust his words. Is that easy? No. We like to control. We, we tend to act, react and act upon what we see. But how many of you have learned that even what you see is not always real? So we have to trust. Remember, the Bible says that without faith you can't please God. Remember that? I'm saved by faith. I need to walk by faith. I need to trust his word. You know the verse, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. Acknowledge him. And what? He shall direct your path. He'll do that. But I have to learn to trust in the Lord, not lean on my own under. Well, this is how it went last year. Well, this is what, this is what happened before. did not mean it's going to happen again. Don't cut God out of the mix. You have to trust in the Lord, and you have to trust the words of the Lord. And what do I know? His word will never change. What do I know? He always follows through on his word. It may not happen today. It may not happen tomorrow. It may not happen next week, but he will always keep his word. Part of trusting is waiting. Yeah, I gotta, okay, I got to go to Egypt. How long, how long are we going to be in Egypt? Should I like rent a room? Should I just get a night, a hotel? I mean, am I looking for a permanent house here? You just go until I give you word to go back. When's that going to be? I'll tell you when to move. We don't like that, but we need to trust it. I know, God, I know what you said. You said, just keep working on myself. You said to, to just stay pure and holy and to say no to temptation, but it's so hard, and everybody else is doing it, and I think I can justify it, but God, you said not to do it. You just keep trusting in the words of the Lord, and you just keep waiting on God, and he will come through. He will direct your path. He will provide. He will lead. He will guide. He will protect. He will always do what he said he would do, but I need to trust him. How many of us have felt so foolish because we stepped ahead of God? And, and God showed us, not that God ever says, ah, I told you so, and you're so stupid, but boy, don't we know? Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever we sow, we're going to reap. I should have waited on the Lord. I shouldn't have panicked. I shouldn't have responded in the flesh. <coughs> we have to learn to trust the words of God. And then lastly, if the words of God are going to be a priority, look, we got to listen to him. We've got to trust his words, and then we've got to respond. I mean, you go to the doctor and you're sick. The doctor says, this medication will help you. Here's the prescription. <clears throat> That's on you. It's not going to come to your house three times a day, knock on your door, kick your door down, tackle you to the ground, force open your mouth, hold your nose, and shove it down your throat. But if you don't take it, you can't blame him either, right? You have to respond. Be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. Joseph, you, you need to go through with this. Mary, Mary, raise this boy. The Bible says, chapter one of Matthew, he did. Hey, you gotta get up and you gotta go. You gotta go to Egypt. Okay, hey, we're going to Egypt. When are we going back? I, I don't know, but we're going to follow the Lord. Hey, now it's time to go back. Okay, let's go back. Oh, wow. Wait, there's a vicious ruler in play. What? What's that, God? Go to Nazareth? Let's go to Nazareth. He responded. Are you willing to respond? I don't want to be kind, but God said be kind, so I need to be kind. I don't want to be pure. I'd much rather be impure. I'd much rather let dirty thoughts run through my mind. It's a lot more fun. But God said, be pure. So I need to be pure. I need to act on that. Yeah, but nobody else is. Doesn't matter. But I, I don't, I don't want to give. I mean, that's a struggle. I don't want to have to trust God. God said to do it, so I'm going to do it. Are you willing to respond? We justify and we make excuses. But here's the, 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 whole, the, the, the cold, hard fact when things don't go right, we, we, we have no platform upon which to stand. We can't blame God, but we try. It's your fault, God, and you let this happen, and you could have bailed me out 
had somebody tell me that this week. I don't understand why God didn't just bail me out. Was God, was he like, you know, bail bondsman? Was he just magic genie? Is God just your good luck charm? Or is he almighty, holy God, your savior, your Lord, my Lord? Is the word of God a priority in our life? So you're going to be tasked with a lot of decisions this year. Don't forget God. As a matter of fact, may I submit to you that in our lives, God needs to be where our decision-making process begins. God, what do you say about it? I promise you, whatever you're feeling, whatever circumstance you're in, God has an answer for it. If you'll look, if you'll read, if you'll listen, if you'll be patient, if you'll trust, and then you'll do what you know he's asked you to do. Yeah, but my issue is this, and I don't have an answer yet. Then just continue to do the things that he has told you to do. Don't stop doing what you should do because you don't have an answer yet about something you're not sure about. Continue to respond to the words of God, and as you walk in obedience, God continues to reveal his truth in your life when you need it and when I need it. God has big plans for us. If he didn't, you wouldn't be here. Every day is a good day, amen? Amen. But teach us to number our days, Moses said. So may God help us in this year to let God be at the forefront of our decision-making process. And this is where it starts. May the word of God be a priority in your life. If you don't have a relationship with God, may I just say this to you? This book tells you who God is. He recorded information about him for you. This tells you who he is. If you want to know who he is, all you got to do is open it and read it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you seek him, you'll find him. And he left heaven and came to earth so that you and I might be reconciled with God. And today, if you don't have that relationship with God, you can have that if you'll just turn and believe, repent, say, Lord, be my Savior. We'd love to talk with you about that today, and, and I pray you'll give us that opportunity. And for those of us who know Christ, let's, let's start our year right. Let's let the Word of God be the priority it needs to be. Amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. <laughs> In a moment, Ryan's just going to strum a verse of invitation and 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 we're going to take a moment just to kind of silently reflect and consider. And then we're going to pray and and be dismissed and get you on your way. But can I just ask you not to just push this aside, but for a moment, will you just search your heart? It's not about the person next to you. Right now, it's about you. Is God speaking in your life and mine? Perhaps today, you know Christ as your Savior. You're a child of God. If you died, you know you'd go to heaven. You've trusted Christ by faith. Then can I ask you to ask yourself this honest question? Are the words of God the priority that they need to be in my life? Or do I kind of more live life on my feelings, my circumstances? I really don't know what's going to happen each and every day. I just kind of go with it. Or is it Thus saith the Lord. I don't care if anybody and nobody else has any considerations for the things of God, but for me, I want the words of God to lead and direct my life. If not, today's a new start. It's a new year. You can't go back and change 2022, but you move forward. So Lord, help me this year to consider, to pray to ask, to read, let you be the priority you need to be. Maybe it's, hey, I need to just start reading my Bible every day. Maybe I just need to stop before I make decisions or react. God, are you uh, having a loud voice in my mind, in my heart, in my life? Am I listening to you? Am I trusting your words? Maybe you've kind of Lacked in faith. God, I was hanging on and I, I just, I just kind of decided to, to go my own way.
Would you trust in the Lord? Would you do what you know he wants you to do? Step out. I hope you have some testimonies in your life about how you just stepped out by faith. You did what God told you to do, and wow, you see what God can do in your life. Maybe you don't have many of those stories. You, you could if you'll just respond to his words. He will always keep his word. His truth makes you free. I pray that this year will be a year our church continues to value very fiercely and passionately the truth of God's word. I pray in your life, for your family, for you individually, that you'll love the word of God more than you ever have. Make it that priority. He's got the answers. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. I don't know Jesus, but I want to know Jesus. Would you pray for me today? I, I would like to know that Jesus is my Savior. So before you pray, would you remember me? Would you slip a hand up and put it right back down? Just so I can remember to pray for you in my heart. God bless you. Thanks. Look, we'd love to talk with you. Love to sit and open a Bible and answer your questions. Show you what God says. In a moment, we're going to stand and I'm going to pray. And if you need to come, you want to talk to someone, I'm here. One of our ladies, if you're a lady, you'll be here and glad to talk with you today. But before you go...